So the HA, so the topic here is about the, the myth of MySQL HA, which is today NLDB cluster is the number one topics in how we tackle the high availability and make sure that it's always online and easy. So HA, high availability in MySQL, it has been around for many years. Oh, do you know what is the age of MySQL? How many years? 20? 20? Very close. Very close. Very close. 25, but very close. Another number. 27. Far too much. <laughs> yes. Who said that? Oh, you said that. Okay. <laughs> yes. 24 years old. Okay, by the way, uh, Oracle's, the age is 42. 42 and 22, 24. So HA, we have been actually doing very good over this so many years in how the redundancy we maintain. So we do replication. Replications, I have data, I pass this to you. I have the data, I pass this to you. So this has to be done a lot of time manually manually, although this is like, okay, passing the data to the other one. But what about I fail? I'm the master, I fail, okay? So I have two uh, slaves, master and slaves. I fail, I crashed. And the replications will fail because I cannot send the data to the other two. So very often, in this case, the other server has to be promoted, becomes the master. And then the other server, okay, you talk to this guy and grab the da data. But who does this? Who does this? Somebody, you, program is not automatic. That's why we come up with this InnoDB cluster to build this in. And when I actually crash, oh, someone will be promoted automatically and then this one will handshake to this to get the data directly automatically when I recover I join automatically and then you have more data than me because you are alive I was dead and then I come back I have less data less data I have to ask for more data to more online data and then once I got all the data I online I becomes online and I join the cluster. So this is automatic. So they are all good. So what are those? Okay. So before going into this, actually I show you one demo. So basically in here, this is a just a screen to show you I am accessing the database. The access to the database is I can select the data in here, select one or whatever. It doesn't matter, just to select a value. So when I do this select value, what I do is, okay, this is working. This is working, okay? So when I actually select something else, which is select where I connect to, where I connect to. I connect to a server, which is the host name, my Notebook. And the port number 3310. Although this is small to you, but I read it to you. The port number is 3310. But what happens if the server is crashed? But instead of, I, instead of telling you I crashed the server, I try to, the server I need to offline. The 3310. I'm promoting another server called 3320 to be the primary. And what happened this, I go back and then select this again. Okay, what is it? Can you read? Your eyes is good, I believe. What is the port number in here? That means what? Switched. So when the server crash, automatic, you see that? 
So that's the idea. If this is your application, do you care about the database done? Seems like it's all automatic. So this is the way why we promote this as number one options. And I can do this by switching it back to 1.0, OK, instead of crashing it. Instead, I can crash the server. This is just I want to bring it back. And I go back and select this again. And the numbers returns here is back to 1.0. Oh, thanks, masters. <laughs> So let's look at again. So what I'm going to tell is, what are those secrets? Now it is a section two, right? So the beginning, beginner sections, we just talk about what it is. And now into the HA models, how we can work it better. And the next sections after my talk will be the trend about no SQL, how my SQL is working on. So it will be after me. And the last section is, everything is done, we need to look at performance, how we monitor, how we troubleshoot. So this will be the last section. So to, back to this one section, we look at the basic and how we deploy and what are those the magic? What are those the magic? So we will go over the basic first example and things is not just one single data center. Sometimes we need production, and also DR, or we call site failover, site failure. In here, oh, earthquake, or the building crash, or the room crash, or the power's gone. So maybe another site, the DR has to come up. So how the data, so without the data, the other DR, data center has no use. Data is a must. Without the data, you know nothing about your customer. Without the data, your bank, your account has zero dollars. We are all very poor. <laughs> or we are equivalent. We are all equal. No more rich and poor because everybody the same. No money. So this is actually NODB custard vision us as a single product, my SQL, with HA and the scaling features, which we can add more nodes, one, two, three, add one, web two, add three. And they are all automatic as easy to use. You see, you saw my demo, it is easy to use. And it includes the components, which for sure, multiple servers. One server cannot be HA. One machine cannot be HA. So we have to use servers multiple redundant server and data has to be automatically transported and exchanged. We have the shell, which I did it. I switched the primary, I switched the server. Okay, so that's the shell. And there is also the router, which is the router in between all the server, all the backends, and it's like a proxy. The applications is always connecting to this kind of router and it knows where it has to talk to. So look at this as the basic. We have been talking about master slave replications at the beginning and we are talking about InnoDB cluster in this talk. So what that replication is, the replications by default people use a singleness. It's like posting a mail. The data is written in its own server, and there is binary lock, it's like a data staging area, which is supposed to be sending out. So this is, we call this binary lock. So data is committed only within a single server, and the messenger will come in to pick up the data from the binary log and send it over to the inbox to the other office, which we call this relay log. And the relay log is just kind of messages in the box. Someone wants to pick this up and has to transform this into SQL statement and apply the data back to the database and our applications 
when we use the slave server, we can see the data. That's why when we send the data to the, the server, we call this master. And then you want to read the data just right after I write the data on the server A, the server B may not have the data. And there is also a point when the server A is crashed, the last minute data may not get in there because the data is still there, the message hasn't come yet. So there is a risk, data is gone and lost. And there is also the so-called half-half semi-sync, meaning that when the data is written on my server and I pass to the binary log on my server, and this also passed to the other side relay log, when this actually data passed from the binary log and relay log, the whole section is acknowledged and committed. So when we commit a data, it has to be here and as well as there. That means we do not have the data loss as what I described in the asynchronous replication. This is called semi-sync. Semi, half-half. Semi, Why half-half? Because I deliver the data only just the edge on the other box. And the data has to be applied to the server later on. That's why this is half and half. So this is half and then another half, which after apply, people can see data on the server. So as what I said, the InnoDB cluster is the magic. To automate this like the process of sending the data, getting better data, and promote the database when there is a crash. So this, we have the group replications to exchange data within the group, and they are the members. And there is also application connect to router and sending to the backend, which we do not need to care about which is online or down, because it's all automatic. And there is the shell underneath here to maintain how it works. So all this actually within the enterprise edition, we have the graphical GUI and to monitor. No matter what, let's look at deployment example, how this actually may help a company to deploy this HA models to make sure we are always getting online database and it has to be always be there. So here's the example, at least three server. Why we need three server? One, two, three, at least. Because look at just you and me. If I crash, okay, for sure you have to be the one serve the data. If you crash, I have to serve the data. But what if in the middle it crash? I mean the network is crash. So are you alive? If I can talk to you, this network is not done. Okay. But the network is done. I cannot talk to you. But somebody can talk to you. Are you alive? You will say yes. And then you ask me, am I alive? I will say yes. So both are alive. You write partial data on me and you write partial data on the other. Okay. Data is crashed. So that's why too, this split brain effect is no good. That's why within the three server, when the network is really down, so here, one, two, and three. Server, the network between this and me is down. We have the majority. Two is bigger than one. So we will tell we are alive. This one as one, the minority is going to tell you I'm gone. So that's why this is actually very essential we have this like majority and threes for deployment within one data center. And the application we connect to it through so-called the router as transparency to access. When one is done, the router will know, okay, this is done, this is gone. It connects to the other server for data. And what if we have some more data center? One, two, three, four. So this is actually the way that we have the replication and connect them together. So in here you see that we put a router in the box, like in the DLDC2 in here. So the router is taking care about when the data database in here one is done, 
When one is done, the router knows, okay, one is done, it will connect to the other and to get the data. So it is intelligent to maintain the data stream from the production site to getting the data to the DR as always. And without actually knowing, okay, oh, this is done, I need to reconfigure another channel to pass the data into the DR. So this is, again, automatic. So look at this. Let's deep dive into a little bit more about what, in fact, the details about these configurations. So, in fact, there are so many things that we actually look at. It is text, but just to keep the idea. There are things that we call consistency. There are things that we talk about the network, how we make sure uh, we are the interconnect within the data exchange. And there are people, the application connect to me. So in a box, we may have two network cards. One network is internal network, one is external. That's why there is so-called IP whitelist local address. I will explain it later on the slide. And there is also one thing called network reliability. There are three options right here called expel timeout, auto rejoin trials, and majority timeout. Those three will tell how to manage the network reliability in the coming slide. And there's also things like, how do we take care of the member priority? We call member waiting. So I'm the one server, server two, server three. But how can we actually prioritize? I will always take up the work for ABC. How can I do this? This can be the priority. Oh, I always to do the work for apps, okay? So people write data, always write to me. When I fail, always write to the others. So we have three server. The third server can be very relaxed. In fact, sometimes when we do jobs, some jobs is very heavy, like reporting, very heavy. We never want this heavy job to actually concurrently to run with the OLTP. So we can put this heavy duty job on the third server, on the third server. Unless we know this is one, two, three, then we can actually run on three servers, the third server. That's why the priority, we can assign priority, which is the member waiting, and we can actually put the workload on the less so-called prioritized server. And there's also how we call this exit condition. What we do if somebody actually, the network is cut, and the server is what idle there for what? to still work or actually abort and then shut down or actually behave like offline. This is actually in here. We can actually set it abort with only or offline mode. So here I said that cluster network. So within the three server, those are the application. The application connect, if you know my SQL, it is like port number 3306, for example. But there is actually underlying network. We exchange data. We don't want to expose the data okay, in your network. So we expose this data internal network. So we need to define what this network is. That's what we call local address and also the subnet we call IP wireless. And then to tell this cluster is talking about interconnect where it talks to. Do not just to use Auto, I mean the default values. Default value is some kind of everywhere. And there's also, I mentioned a bot server. So a bot server, the red box is the primary. When actually this is actually one server's cut and this server is leaving the group and at the end, it's just timeout and shutdown. A bot server is to shut down. So it is good or it is not good. I believe may not be always good because you see the server is gone and then you may have problem to see should I restart it or is there any other issue why it shut down. If this actually just offline, it's just online and then you can look at the, day, the, 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 the warning and then you can tell what happened, why it's offline. So it is better than shut down. That's why we have the exit state action. What is the exit state when this kind of, okay, you're leaving the cluster. What should be the state, okay, is going into. 
And there is also the consistency when we talk about when fail over, automatic, but how is this done? So when this actually a server, which is the red one, we call the primary, primary, we write data on the primary, but we read the data on the secondary. So when we write the data on the primary, so data will pass to the secondary, the other two box. There are some bad locks, some data to be queuing up, okay, to write to the secondary server. So I finish, but I pass the data to you, you have to write back to the database. So what this means, when this so-called apply stage, when one is server, the server is crashed, or primary is down, and this one is promoted, or oh, when it is promoted, somebody will come and then see, I read the data. Oh, when I read the data, the last two pieces, you see the last piece, two pieces, data, it was written on the primary, but it is still in the queue. When I read, I may not be able to read the yellow and also the green. I might not be able to read because it hasn't yet applied. So what this means, the data is not the updated data. So how that works? We actually, what we do here is the stale data. This actually, we want, what we want is when this data apply and then we read it. Whenever it's rich. That's why it come up with the so-called before on primary fail over. In the applications we create, we can set the section. Whenever there is something, okay, we fail over, we need to wait. It's automatic. As long as there is default setting that we put it in. And before on primary fail over, meaning that I need to get the data, okay, with the consistency when I fail over. So there is also the setting with the global. One is the section, one is the global. Okay, just put into the global section variables. Globals meaning the default values. Set it up the default values. When server startup, every sections will take over these values. The MySQL router will take this as the default. And when it fail over to another server, it makes sure it connects to the server with all the data applied and then passed through the connection. So this is actually quite important variables to before on primary fail over. So in here, we do have other options. We have before, after, and also before and after. What is before? Before means when I have the applications to query the data. I can query the data for the actual data, whatever is updated anywhere in this cluster. It has to be applied before I read it. That's why this, we can set up the section with this consistency, I need the actual data, the consistent data to be queried, selected. And also when I apply the data, when I write the data, I can set this to after. There's a before, there's also after. I write the data, I will write to server A, server B, and server C, and come back and commit. So this is like synchronous replications. Okay, so my SQL, has all these options. It is not so-called async or sync. It's very, very flexible. It's by application. You decide what to do. And there is also network reliability. And the network reliability is, there is some, some kind of habit. Are you here? Are you here? Five seconds you don't reply. Five seconds, you don't reply, I kick you out. Five seconds, okay? This is what the default. So what that means, five seconds, is it long? Is it short? All depends. Really, all depends. Sometimes there is applications or the network is so interrupted. Maybe even 30 seconds to resume. And it's very often to do that then I will say, set this up for this expel timeout, expel timeout. To kick you out, I set it to 30 seconds. That means even there are interruptions with the network because 
within company, our organization may say our network is not as stable as others. We have some kind of interruption every week. We don't know when, but we don't want disruption to our business. But every week we have this. So what we need to do is we may set this up like 30 seconds, for example. To set this up 30 seconds, then OK, within the 30 seconds, it's still hanging around. Because the happy, I'm still waiting for it. Can this network time out to be set like one hour? Ah, oh, one hour. That means, oh, are you here? I can wait forever, like one hour until I know you are expelled. One hour. That means if you really crash, really, really crash, okay, the system is down for one hour until I know I kick you out and then, okay, we, we do work, continue. So the expel time can, cannot be too long. I have to recognize, okay, maybe oh, two minute downtime is good or 30 seconds. So there's maybe a judgment. What the limit? I believe 30 seconds to two minutes is kind of good values. Maybe some people actually five seconds as actually the default. A good network, five seconds should be good enough. Five seconds. So five seconds, you don't respond, kick you out, good. But certain network may not be, right? So I believe most likely it has to be less than, uh, I mean, two minutes, okay? To make sure that you are, okay, if you are not response in two minutes, go away. So this is kind of the expel timeout. And there's also the auto rejoin. Consider when one server is down because of the network. So during the weekend, during the weekend, so in fact, in fact, during the weekend, you don't care because still two, two servers is running. Okay, one network is offline, two is running, but I don't want to come back to office to fix. I need to wait until the Mondays to come. So during this like the weekend, I don't want to come back, but by sometime somebody will fix the network. Okay, if that server is good and intelligence to reconnect by itself, reconnect then I don't need to do anything. That's what we try. This is like we connect, we try. So during this time, actually, the default is zero. It never we try to rejoin. So if we set it to like 12, 1, 2, 12, it means that every five minutes, every five minutes, it comes to, OK, I come back. I come back every five minutes and try to rejoin. If the network we zoom, OK, come back and then back to the state is the cluster. 12 means one hour. 12 means one hour. So if we are talking about oh, three days, let's assume the weekend, three days, then what values do we set this? Three times 24 times what, right? Times 12. Every hour, 12. And then that's the value, set it to it. And then three days, you still the server still keep retry every five minutes. So they are the values, okay? And there is also one called the majority timeout. Again, wow, you are the, the, the part of the game. You are responsible for all the data's creation. When the transaction is coming to you, at this point, crash. Commit data is trying to ask, are you there and then are you agree? Are you agree? Okay, do you agree the data? Your network is done, I can listen to you. You cannot listen to the networks from, from this, okay, transaction. So this actually the majority is here. You minority. So what happens to this minority is by default, this value, by default this value is zero, means hang means you just hang there, somebody to look at you. Hang there, okay? Zero means hang. It is good, somebody to look. And then we two just, oh, good. We have expel timeout after five seconds, kick you out. We, okay, you take up the primary. So the other one will, we have the primary. But you as, also as primary. You have two primary, but this primary is dead, is hang. So this is, the majority timeout. So what we do, maybe you said, okay, one to oh, two minutes. So after two minutes, this hang 
will come back and then say errors. And when this errors happen, so this actually the data will roll back. And you know, OK, this one, you are actually not coming back. So you minority will turn the state to error state. When turn this error state, and then because, oh, error, and then you will try, you will try to see, oh, am I able to, after five minutes, am I good to go back? So this is actually going back to the process. So this three is a good tool to look at how to protect the server and automate the process, how to retry and make sure the network is still unstable or stable and still keep our servers to be reliable. They are very good and important. And in the MySQL cluster, InnoDB cluster, we add new features from time to time. In the just begin, just uh, in July, we add one more feature called clone. Clone. It is quite easy. And when we have one tool and the third server come in, so it, ha it is just empty database, nothing. We have data, always we have data, one server or two server. What it does, clone my data to you. It's just like backup and recovery. So this clone is just easy. And in here, the MySQL shell, we add the instance and recovery method as clone. And the data will be just all data back. All data back. Even the username, all this. By default, your user root is empty password. When I clone my database to you, my user password is yours. I pass to yours. And the empty password is no longer valid on that server. So here, this is kind of the uh, demo. But other things, so this is like automation. There's also performance-wise. How we tackle the database, like when data is written back, written back onto the slaves. Here, we have the database as master. Data come here. I pass to you. I pass to you. Data has to go back. We call this SQL applier. Apply the data back to the database. So we have the algorithm to make sure that we can work in parallel. This is what the parallel type. Default is database. And we can change by clock. Who can run first, who can run the second, is by like the timing. By default, who can actually be in parallels to run is by database. MySQL, the first line, the first line from Ryan is talking about database equal to schema. <laughs> so basically, each database, we can run different threads. So if we have more applications and writing to database DB1, DB2, DB3, then DB1, all this transaction, is, they are independent of DB2 and DB3. So those actually parallelizations can concurrently execute it, okay, by databases, by database. This is the default. But in many cases, we do not run multiple database and then parallelization in this way. In many cases, what MySQL or the application is written is one single database, one single database, or even multiple databases, they are they dependence. They depend on each other. So what we do is we can change this parallel type to logical clock and then put in the parameters called workers. How many workers do we want to work and to apply the data? Two, three? Four, it depends on your I.O. and also the CPU. You have more, you put in more, and data come in more, and it actually execute at the same time, at the same time, and put it back to the database. So this is how we actually make it, okay, work faster. Logical clock and more threads, and the commit order must be preserved. Preserved, okay? So this actually is handled Nicely. And in the InnoDB cluster, MySQL, we have this. So automated way of InnoDB cluster. We have some kind of GTID, and we need the BIM knocks to be in certain format and the criteria. They are B 
in a format, checksum, GTID, and how the data is actually sitting there in the repository doing the table. And also when we write how we put a hash number, and then that's using what kind of algorithm we have to define in here. So here I'm telling you there are a lot of things that make it more reliable and make it run to be better and faster, right? So it's so happy we have this automatic MySQL InnoDB clusters to get fade over automatic and to make it work. And there is also router configuration. We have the server, we also have the router. The router, we need to take care how many connections to connect and where we put the data. Okay, the log can be info, and in, on Windows, we can put in the event logs, window events. If you like the Windows applications, you know there are places we put the logs on Windows. So people will see that the event logs may be a place. And there is also the notifications. Wow, the server, ABC server. We may have server down or someone to switch over because of manual operations. So this is notification. Things changes among the server. We need to proactively to notify the router. I have changed. Next time you come to me, talk to this, talk to this, talk to that. So this is proactive. This is so-called use GR notifications and it enables the notifications for what changes we make in the, in the server set. And then it's just apply and then the router will knows and the whatever connections come in will knows where to connect to. So here is another myth. So we somebody will try to put your application on the from drive. From drive. Application on from drive portable, right? Everything's talking of portable apps. So from drive, most likely from drive is FAT. Am I correct? FAT. So FAT, it has a characteristic. The characteristic is it does not have like the privilege. It's everyone can write and read. And my SQL router, there is a key files, which is the key file it has to be run properly and keep properly. So here is the error. When I run this, there is like, oh, everyone has full access right. Errors. Because there is like password, password and key. It's the key storage in the router. We do not allow this key to be stored in this FAT volume. If you put it there, you never be able to start the router. So this is like kind of tricks. So portable app and then you put it there, maybe you see issues. Okay? So better when you do this like portable is still NTFS if it is a window. Or on Linux is EXT two or three, doesn't matter. Or four. Uh, what is the very common uh, file system on Linux? EXT <laughs> XFS. <laughs> yeah, by default, correct. But uh, on the from drives, people don't do it. <laughs> Still FAT because Windows use it. <laughs> yes, correct. Yeah. So that's why portable apps, okay, uh, there is kind of tricks. And there's also, do you know what is log rotation? Log rotation. On Linux, this is open, right? Open. Uh, source, people use a lot of Linux. So the logs has to be maintained. An application has always be active and running. Application always active and running. It always kind of writing to certain files. It's the logs file. It's being locked. And you never be able, it's grow, 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 and then too big. It run one month, two months, a year, and nonstop. You never be able to clean this up. So we need to find a solution to stop it and then rotate it and clean it up. So log rotation is the way how we trigger. Usually on Linux, it is using signal to signal so-called a hang up, HUP. 
So you send a signal, Q minus 1. Okay? So this is open source, you are technical, I tell you more detail. Send a signal, Q minus 1 to the process. It tells the process to close the file and reopen the file. So what we do is, this is actually the tricks. On Linux, you mend the log rotate. Man the log rotate, you see how you do things. And we actually, the router can do this log rotate at the same time. Work together with log rotate and the logs, okay, can actually be renamed and also can be closed and reopened. So all this, we have the shell. We set the option, we maintain the cluster, and they are all be within the shell we call admin API. Admin API. We have DBA command, we have cluster command, we have all this working nicely, and it is command line. Why we have the command line? Because a lot of things, we need to integrate this admin to other tools, to other tools. And we use some other things to monitor this, and that's the graphical GUI or we use others, but we still need the admin CLI to maintain the interop with other products. So admin API to get the things, how it works. We can set options, we can see options, we can set a specific server options, consistency, fade over, and all this can be done within the shell. Only four lines you can create the cluster four lines of this shell admin API. You can create to the cluster up, 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 and then we bring this three into a cluster, four lines of cook, and then we can bring them into cluster. It is very easy. Okay, so there is also the way that we see backup recovery. So the backup recovery is the way how we see the efficiency Oh, we have the A server, B, and C. Where do we back up? Sometimes we back up always the very active server, very busy server. No, we don't. We may want the, oh, the third server, which is quite a lot idle, and we back up from the very idle and relaxed server. Am I correct? The busy server still keeping to run database on other activity. We will separate the loading on different server, so the backup may actually be executed on the lower priority server. So the backup has to be also running fast. And we have the writable server. This is read-write, this is read-only, and this is read-only. And when I backup from the read-only, so this actually the backup will go to the read-write server and write the data and telling you already back up, and the three server will be consistent, and it knows we have already finished the backup. So this information is maintained in the database, but this only server cannot be written. So when I back up to this, the backup software will automatically, it knows this is a cluster, and it knows which server can be written. It back up this, it will come back, oh, comes to the writable server and write the data there and it will be transported back to here. It's all automatic. It's all automatic. So that's why this is like the backup. And there is also, we talk about the configurations. There are three configurations file in the MySQL world. And one is, we generally we have the configuration and define all the values, variables. That's the my.cnf or my.ini. And there are the other two files. One is the, the server name, server ID. We call the server UUID. It is stored in the auto.cnf. Auto.cnf within the data directory. And there is also in MySQL 8.0 and up, we have the persistency variables. Persistence variables it is stored within the mysqld-auto.cnf. mysqld-auto.cnf. So these two files, it indicate the actual server identity. Okay, so free configuration. If I have the data, you have the data, I have the data. 
So when I restore to there, and then I put up the so-called the three CNF file, and the name they are the same. And we just need to make sure the GTID must be the same. So from the backup, when we backup using the enterprise, all this, okay, backup from me, and I know how to reposition another new instance, and then bring it to like in sync within the cluster as one new member. I back up the data using enterprise backup. And then there is a GTID information about me, about the server. GTID means like in Oracle, the SCN number. It knows what actually store within the database. What actually I can bring back the data within the SCN, or we call the GTID. So this information is called metadata, GTID metadata. This is within the InnoDB, within the enterprise backup. When this actual information we cover back to the new member, and data is there, GTID is there, and three configuration is there, this is new server with the same set of data as the existing cluster members. And they can form the new cluster. Okay? So if you want this as the same name as the existing one, put it back to three config. If you do you think this actually serves a new name, okay, we move the auto.cnf, it will be another name because the auto cnf is the name, UUID. You just delete it. It will come back, oh you are a new member. I don't know you because your name is ABC. My previous name is XYZ. So if you delete the auto cnf, you got the new name. So here, this is kind of to tell you. So they are the things that we need to protect, the three configurations and also the GTID. Sometimes when I work with customer, people always try to use reset master. Have you heard reset master and reset slave? No. Just the tracking of all this transaction ID. Oh, forget it, everybody the same. So. Clear your mind, clear your mind. You are empty, you are empty, you are empty. So when everybody is empty, they are the same, right? Empty database, empty database, empty database, they are the same. Reset master is just logically to tell you, you know nothing, you know nothing, you know nothing. But in the database, you store the data. So sometimes when I go into, I meet customer, they tell, oh, uh, quite a few weeks ago, uh, because some problem, okay, you have some problem and you have some problem. Okay, they don't know the problem. And then they want to fix the problem. How they fix is clear your mind, clear your mind, clear your mind. You know nothing, you know nothing, I know nothing. And then we are all equal now because all we know nothing. Then we can bring back, <laughs> you, you see? But in fact, you still have the problem internally. I still have the problem internally. We still have the problem internally. When we hit the problem again, the problem is still there. So superficially, on the face surface, it is like clear we all equal, but at the bottom, they are not equal. So this is kind of many times we go out, we see customers just to fix the problem by covering all the facts by removing all the details, we set, and then you know nothing, you know nothing, I know nothing. So just be aware, don't do it, because this is down, the board, down to the bottom, it has the data. And it has the ABC data, it has ABCDE data. So when the time somebody updated the E there, and then coming back to here, I have already E data, then what problem is this? Duplicate data and cannot apply because we are not the same, but you are telling they are the same. So this is kind of very popular, okay? People trying to fix it by covering the fact using resets. So this is, make sure that we understand correctly what it is doing, and people always to back up by, with the scheduled jobs in, on the Linux, like cron job, and then to back up the data onto a separate folders, not, I mean the separate volume, because backup always grow, and then you have never expect this, somebody will come and then clean this up. So this actually the volume should be untied 
to the data volume, or the data volume should be a stand-alone volume for data. And people grow the logs, grow something else, cannot grow into the data volume. Otherwise, the data cannot be written. Okay, backup fail, but application still running properly. Okay, so I think this is the section about how we can maintain a reliable database and giving you the way uh, always online. So questions, any questions? Actually, uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, write latencies. So um, how does the, um, the various uh, configurations uh, or strategies uh, affect uh, write latencies? So for example, is it, does it block the writes or does it uh, write but then it does not return uh, until, uh, until all the data is consistent? How, uh, how does it work? OK. Thanks for these questions. So the latency means that uh, when we have the applications to write, so it depends on whether the operation is to write data, whether this is like to read data. So the question is about to write data. To read data, okay, first to go the other side. To read data, the latency is about we read on server A, server B, and server C. So they are independent. It doesn't require to read from me and then I ask the other data from other servers. So it is very fast read and very isolated environment. Good, actually, this is a good environment for scale read because all independent. Three not enough, adding four, five, six. And then more users can come to read independently and concurrently. So this is read. And latency is to read built in. It's about I.O. and memory, latency. To write, write to a server. So basically, MySQL in NoDB cluster okay, can be single primary, single write, can be multiple writer. Single writer or multiple writer. So let's back to single writer first. Single writer first. So single writer is to write on the one server. The one server has to pass data to ABC server. Pass to me, pass to the third. So the latency is, hi, I have the data, I have the data. It requires the acknowledgement. That's the latency. So this first, first, it write the data to the server in the mem, I mean in the in the in the memory, and then pass the data in the memory to the other server. So the latency is still memory, not I/O at this point. Not I/O. This is important, and this like we call this certification process, and it requires the majority rules. It's about latency. Majority rules means if this is one, two, three. Majority is two. So when any one of the servers say yes, pass, and you are ignored. Why this happened? Because when this is right, and somebody to tell you, OK, that means the other one has to say OK. Otherwise, this one just drop off. You have problem. You just get off. So that's why this is the majority rules. So when this happened, this is latency is fast. But to the point is, can this be like always like two servers to run? Because I'm fast, you are fast. Always I respond, and this one is like gone because it never catch up. Problem happened. So no, because there is a flow control. Just look at one individual statement, one individual. That can be fast. But we look at like the overall lifetime in our operation, we cannot leave the other server behind and then we don't care. So there is a flow control. Make sure we do not have too much gap. When this actual concurrence, we need we do stress test. And this one, the latency we will try to hand you. Wait, this one left, left behind too much. This is flow control. So this is another deep dive parameters. So to answer you is memory copy, memory copy, 
and to write the bin log and relay log concurrently and send the data concurrently to ABC server concurrently. So from the latency point, it's like network. And then getting back, and then this is independent. Okay? So, and also the majority, this is fast. From single operation, it is fast. From the overall, in and out flow must be the same. So I hope you understand this is actually the best option. And latency is more than just, more than just so-called passing the data. Latency also talking about the bulk of the data. I send a transaction. A transaction can be K, can be Mac. If a K, 1K, 2K, it is small. But one Mac passing over the stream, one Mac, if we do not trunk, trunk, trunk K into trunk, then things actually in between cannot pass through. That's why there is also mechanism to break the big chunk into smaller chunk. So there's some other habit in the network can flow through. And acknowledgement is like a synchronous to acknowledge to back to you. So this is all built into the NODB cluster already. I hope this answers your question. Yes, thank you very much. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, so I think uh, we can uh, take it uh, to break now. So, uh, but if anyone has any questions, please feel free to uh, step up to uh, Ivan and Ryan uh, during the during the break and ask all the questions you want. Uh, we will be uh, back here at 4 p.m. sharp for um, more uh, MySQL. So it will be unleashing the power of no SQL using MySQL. It'll be fascinating. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much.